a FET Electric 60 watt equivalency LED light bulb. 800 lumens, 9.8 watts, those are certainly uh, class competitive numbers. Uh, there's a two year residential warranty on it. Uh, we'll take a look at it performs, tear it down. Okay, well, before we get started, one has to admire the packaging. Uh, obviously, some sort of um, light shifting chromatic uh, treatment on the box. Um, it's a real sparkly appearance, and uh, I'm sure that's very important in the retail space. Okay, well let's talk about light spectra. Well, these are obviously all white bulbs, but of course you can look at uh, light as its constituent components of red, green, and blue. Uh, and the tool you need for that is, of course, a spectroscope. Um, now, that sounds like a pretty expensive tool, uh, but it turns out there's a group out there which has a web-based program and some fun templates called spectralworkbench.org. Um, and you get you can get bulb spectrus for absolutely nothing. Um, now, I built a slightly more sophisticated jig with some wood and some metal tape to get a little more consistency with the results. And I took a look at four bulbs. I took a look, of course, the FET bulb that we're uh, looking at today, the Cree bulb, uh, a standard incandescent bulb, and then uh, out of the uh, frame, because I'm actually using it to film this video, uh, a Philips bulb. And what happens is that uh, the computer will give you a, a graph of the spectra. And of course, the red colors down here, blue up here, and of course, the intensity at each point. Okay, well, here's all uh, four spectrums. Uh, let's see, the blue curve is probably the most interesting. Uh, the Sylvania here, uh, in the second one, it has a fairly gentle curve. Uh, but if you look at all three uh, LED-based light bulbs, you can see that the uh, blue attacks much faster and falls off much more quickly uh, than the incandescent. Uh, otherwise, uh, the shape seems fairly similar. Uh, the attack angle of the uh, red curve seems to be slightly different. So the Phillips, for example, in the very bottom there seems a bit different than uh, an incandescent. That makes sense, I guess. The, the FET, uh, the Phillips bulb are uh, 3,000 Kelvin bulbs. The Cree bulb is 2,700K. So, anyways, a uh, really interesting little bit of uh, amateur science you can do. Uh, if you have a free webcam, it's um, absolutely no, no, no money to do this. Just uh, download a program. Okay, always some worrisome text. Improved light distribution, which I guess means the previous one wasn't very good. <laughs> Let's uh, take a light meter, do a polar graph of the bulb, and see if... Uh, See if why they've improved their uh, light distribution. Okay, let's talk about light intensity coming from the bulb. Uh, below the bulb here is a polar graph. Uh, the bulb was placed in the center of the graph, and then I recorded the amount of light coming out at various angles, uh, and that unfortunately results in a polar plot. Uh, obviously, the further you are away from the center, the greater the light output. Now, um, that's one of the most challenging uh, aspects of an A-shaped bulb is trying to get these uh, LEDs to to emulate uh, the shape of an incandescent. This bulb's doing a fairly good job of it. You can see there's, you know, the classic two lobes here. Pulls in a little bit here. I'm not sure if this, in, this point coming down here on top dead center is a measurement error or if it truly has a bit of a dead spot. Um, that one surprised me because you don't see that uh, when the bulb's powered. But the bulb um, isn't side-firing as much as I would have expected, which tells me that it's probably going to be um, a downward-firing bulb when we crack it open. Uh, but certainly uh, quite a usable light pattern. Okay, well, let's talk about flicker. Um, what I have here is a very simple setup of the solar cell, just mounted on a very crude jig. I can just adjust it, keep the bulb set. And uh, what happens when you look at the oscilloscope screen, it of course will show a, a classic signal, 120 hertz. Um, and what that is, of course, is, is flicker. There's basically an AC component uh, on the bulb, and uh, people can perceive that as flicker. Now, um, if we just uh, take this bulb here and uh, switch out switch it out for a, uh, let's say, let's say a free bulb. Um, I'll keep everything constant otherwise. And you'll see, relatively speaking, the, the Cree bulb, for example, uh, here is considerably uh, more flicker. So there's certainly a continuum of flicker. The best bulbs they've torn down have seemed to be consistently Phillips. Uh, this bulb is basically somewhere in the middle of the pack. Okay, uh, dimmability. Uh, this dimmer here predates LED bulbs by quite uh, quite a number of years. Um, some bulbs actually call it very specific dimmers. Didn't see that in this package. Uh, certainly turns on and um, gets a bit brighter. It's not um, it doesn't have a super wide range of dimmability, um, unlike uh, some of the pre other bulbs I torn down. But uh, yeah, sure, it's dimmable. Okay, teardown time. Okay, um, obviously the top's been removed. Uh, it was a, uh, a plastic uh, top. And you can see, uh, obviously, uh, all the emitters are on a planar array. And that's not a big surprise, given what uh, we saw for light distribution patterns. 
Uh, what else can we see? Well, um, one thing that's really obvious is a really large number of emitters. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll put, plug the drive into a dimmer and see if we can see if it's a single die per package. I suspect it is because it's just a tremendous number of placements. Um, here you can find the manufacturing date of the actual uh, circuit board here, 2013, 18th week. I'm turning this down in October. Uh, you can check these codes actually if you're trying to figure out whether or not a, a company has a good supply chain and they're selling products through rapidly or if they got problems with distribution. If this gets too big, of course, you have a lot of inventory and uh, it's a sign of financial strength if a bulb is selling well. Or that's true of actually any product. Uh, let's see if I can get another code here. Uh, Okay, um, you can see a number here. Uh, there's a, a UL mark, and then there's this number down here. And uh, there's actually a database, uh, database.ul.com, and it actually lists things. Um, if you want to get a bulb that's certified, everything in the bulb has have certifications as well. And here's the name of the company. Um, I don't dare try to pronounce that name. Um, and, uh, FEDA, of course, isn't a manufacturer. I think they're mostly a, a procurement distribution type of organization. So uh, this is where the bulb's coming from. Um, and if you search that name, you can actually um, uh, find out exactly, in fact, the address of uh, where it is. Also, here it is. And then it lists all of the types of circuit boards that uh, UL's approved them for. Um, and obviously, uh, multi-layer metal base and single-layer metal base printed wiring boards, uh, which, of course, this is. I'm sure this will be an aluminum substrate of some sort. Well, let's uh, keep on going. Okay, well I plug the bulb back in, it's on a dimmer and it's set to its lowest possible level and if you look closely at each individual LED, I suspect they are a single die and uh, unlike some bulbs which put multiple dies in a package um, and that perhaps also accounts for why uh, we're seeing so many placements. Okay, so indeed the emitter ray is on an aluminum substrate. The interesting thing is the um, it's very little thermal compound, you can sort of see it there would rather hope that would have been spread around a little more evenly because obviously all the heat in the LEDs uh, need to get into this heat sink here. These have to stay cool in order for them to have a good life. So, a little surprised by that. Let's uh, open it up. Uh, obviously a heat sink. It's a metal with a nice white powder coat. Uh, and here we can see now the uh, main circuit module that runs AC to DC. Uh, and no surprise, uh, we see the classic uh, potting compound that's uh, I'm sure to even though the thermal transfer which results in better life. But. Okay, uh, this is the AC to DC converter. Let's see. Uh, let's check out the UL text first because this one's quite amusing. A different uh, code than the one on the emitter array, so it's coming from a different circuit board plant. Uh, here's the name of it, the Sejuan, the Speed of Light Electronics Co. What a great name. Uh, okay, let's see here. Let's flip it around. Um, Pretty standard topology, uh, AC and DC out, of course. Uh, unusually, there's actually two circuit boards here, and uh, that's a fairly significant cost adder. Uh, the uh, supply is obviously isolated with the transformer here. Uh, the main smoothing regulator, uh, pardon me, the smoothing capacitor is, is this unit here. Uh, an unknown vendor to me, 105 degrees, Sam Young. Uh, this is the part that when it uh, opens or fails, you get even more uh, flicker on your bulb, or potentially even the regulator stops working. Uh, just flip it over here, and uh, this is the main control I see. Let me just uh, pop up the data sheet for that. It's uh, from uh, NXP, it used to be known as Philips in a connector, I think. A SSL21082T dimmable LED driver I see, so um, with a built-in MOSFET. Interesting. Um, the built-in MOSFET, again, it makes me quite surprised to see that there's actually a, even another daughter card for this to work, so I'm not quite sure what's going on there. Uh, otherwise, um, all the classic things, you have a fuse here, of course, in the input. Uh, there was an inductor here, <coughs> which is uh, part of an EMI filter along with this capacitor to prevent uh, energy from being conducted back into the bulb. And I'm not sure as much else one can say. Um, other than maybe surprisingly expensive, you know, two circuit boards, didn't expect that. Certainly as the market becomes extremely cost competitive, uh, this kind of approach, I don't think would have uh, many legs. To okay, so here's a picture of the board, and you can sort of look at the uh, solder joint quality. Uh, the very grainy uh, solder joints. Uh, now, in the era of leaded solders, uh, that would be a sure sign of very poor quality soldering. However, it's a lot more difficult to tell now with these lead-free solders. Um, however, if you take a look at this picture here, this appears to be a stress fracture, and what's happened is the soldering started to separate from the through-hole lead. And if that's the case, of course, it would eventually open up and the bulb would fail. 
Uh, and here's another one too. It looks like it's a stress fracture. So if those are stress fractures, uh, certainly would point towards uh, a limited life for the bulb.